I have some room here. I can actually... Oops. That was a huge mistake. Hey everybody, it's Moonbo here, and welcome to my first Scrap Mechanic tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about making an airplane, and I'm not going to go into much detail about all the design aspects of an airplane. I think design, um, it would be a whole other tutorial. Um, if you guys want to, though, uh, if you want to see more tutorials and you like this one, then hit the like button. That'll let me know that uh, you guys would like to see more tutorials, and I can certainly uh, think of a few, you know, like a helicopters and like designing things. And if you guys have any suggestions for more tutorials in Scrap Mechanic, I'd be happy to try my shot at doing one of them. So like I was saying, this is going to be an airplane tutorial. It's not going to focus a lot on the design, so I'm going to just make a generic kind of shape. I don't have a reference image whatsoever. This is going to be more so about putting the thrusters in specific spots and the buttons that you assign to them. So I am going to just quickly go through and make a, a generic airplane that you guys could uh, design as well. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It's more so taking the concepts of the thrusters and then putting them in your own aircraft. Alright, so here is a makeshift airplane. I just threw this together. Like I said, I'm not focusing too much on the design. So let's just say you've been making uh, a cool looking airplane and this is where you've gotten so far. And you're ready to put thrusters in it. You want to get some, some flight going. You don't know where to go from here. Uh, so this is where I will start explaining what I kind of do. Uh, so as you can see, I'll talk about the design of this plane in the sense that uh, this is something that you should probably try and achieve with something that you're making. So, if I open this up and kind of remove some of this airplane, actually, as you can see, there's uh, something to mention, and that is that you need at least four high for thrusters. You can't forget that. So, if you put a thruster in here, 
you have to remember that it's four high, so you need to make sure that that space is there. If you don't put that space there, then uh, you'll pretty much have to resort to only putting them on the outside of an airplane. So the first part of this tutorial, basically, I would mention is you want to make sure you have the space for the thrusters, and you probably will have to put some on the outside. So in this case here, I'm definitely going to need some on these little wings uh, for some of the turning principles. So uh, let's start putting some thrusters in. The first thing I always focus on is going uh, through the stages of flight. So the first stage of my flight, of course, is going to be lifting up into the air. Uh, so that, of course, is the simulated... Uh, lift in scrap mechanic so here this obviously is not going to do i don't have any room there to put thrusters under that seat so what i'll do is i'll actually open up this front part right here and as you can see destroy a couple more things um obviously i wasn't putting too much effort or thought into the shape of this plane i just wanted to make sure that the key things were followed so if i actually if i uh Put a couple of these here and do that. I need at least a little bit to start putting thrusters on. And there's always another option too, which is to put the entire thing on the lift. So let's turn that off, actually. That's kind of getting annoying. <laughs> Alright, so I have some room here. I can actually... Oops. That was a huge mistake. Alright, let me fix that. <laughs> Alright, so I fixed the problem there. I accidentally cut one of the wheels off, but the reason why I was going to do that was to change something, and so I've changed it. So here, I've taken out what you originally saw there was like a big bar of metal. Uh, so I added a bit more detail, actually. If I hop out here, you can see now I actually made the bottom completely 45 degree angle. And what that actually did was allow me to put thrusters directly up against the edge here. So even I skipped a little bit of a step there. Maybe I made that plane a little too quick. Uh, but nonetheless, I now have room for thrusters on either side. And so I made this plane uh, with an even number. So as you can see, there's no uh, kind of offset thrusters. So if I want to put thrusters down the center, that's fine. But the problem is I can't, I couldn't put a, a propeller on the front here. It would look kind of funny. So I ended up doing like a dual prop on either side of the wing there. And that way we can get some full even thruster placement uh, just for the sake of the tutorial. Because when you get into odd numbers, it starts getting kind of funny. But I'm going to start putting a couple thrusters here. As you can see, I'm always making sure that they're completely symmetrical. That's pretty much rule number one. If you could say that there are rules to making an airplane, is you always want to try to achieve symmetry. Uh, now, obviously, on a bigger plane, say, for example, the... Uh, the AC-130 that I made, it uh, it has uh, some details on the inside that aren't quite symmetrical, but the sheer size of it kind of overrides that entire thing. So I'm going to put maybe just two in the back. So I'm thinking about weight ratio here. Now obviously, in this case here, the, the weight of the plane is certainly here down the center, and you can see this huge gap of weight here. Now, the tail might offset that a little bit. I'm actually going to finish it right here. So this metal in the tail could probably offset all of this extended weight here. Um, there's only one way to find out though, so really you just have to start turning on thrusters and finding this balance point. And like I was saying, uh, depending on the shape of your airplane, that's going to change everything. So I'm going to just throw down a couple switches here. I'm probably just going to leave it pretty empty as far as this airplane and not add too much detail. But right now I want to see what this many thrusters will do and I'm gonna max them all out so I find the easiest way to make an airplane is to start maxing out all of your thrusters and then taking them back uh, so it's kind of like a, a give and then a take so if I ooh, if I s attach the switch to the seat here we'll get an idea of what six thrusters with two in the front and one and a two or sorry four in the front and a couple in the back so here my nose went flying up so right away I know that that was too much now I didn't quite look, but did did the back come up a bit? So the back didn't come up at all, which means I know for sure that this tail is doing a great job of balancing the front and the back. Maybe a little bit too much, but that just means that we can probably be a little bit more balanced with these thrusters. So if I can actually get in here, and what if I added, actually I'm going to save that tail spot for some more important stuff. So I'm actually just going to match the front like this and add the thrusters there. Now max these out. 
I'm gonna probably start being able to bring them back a bit. So the front is still coming up very quickly. Um, but I don't think I need to necessarily add more thrusters to the back. Unless maybe, I think I might have made this tail a little bit too heavy. What if I just get rid of those there? So the front is doing no effort whatsoever. I'm uh, The most important part here is trying to see if I'm even getting the tail up. So right now, obviously, the tail is not coming up. I'm going to have to do a single thruster back here for the forward, or sorry, for the upward lift. So I'm going to get rid of these, because I might not even need those. Uh, so basically, a principle in thrusters in an airplane is the farther back you put them and the farther forward you put them, the more of an effect that they have. So if you have, like, your center of mass somewhere kind of where I'm looking here, uh, maybe a bit more forward, uh, because this tail is obviously doing a great job. So if the center of mass is up or back here somewhere like this, and you put thrusters farther away, it's going to want to push on that pivot point angle. So it's hard to explain, but because I had these ones here so much closer than these or these ones here, there was kind of like a or sorry, farther away, I should say. They were farther than the back ones here, because I think the back ones, yeah, so here, the back ones are here. I'd say the center of mass is somewhere here, and these thrusters were much farther than these ones. So these ones were pushing on more weight than the forward ones. So by adding a single one back here, and I bet you maxing it out might be a little bit much, but we're gonna see what that has. So that's not even coming up anymore. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot that I had removed these ones here just to get inside so we'll hook these ones back up and make these max power hop in hmm see so that one all the way at the back it had a huge effect on the entire balance and I'd say this is this is pretty well balanced a good way to test your balance of an airplane uh, as far as just going straight up and down is is doing the like on off test is what I would call it so you basically turn your thrusters on and off and as you can see I slowly kind of drift back uh, so that might just be because my wheels start me tilting back by default and if that's the case then I'm certainly just gonna leave it the way it is because I don't need to worry too much about the rest of it so I'm really happy with just going up and down like that the next thing that I do is the forward thrust so I've covered up and down uh, the forward thrust is where it starts to get very tricky, and this is because based off of your center of mass and where you have put your thrusters, if you put thrusters in a certain spot for your forward thrust, it's going to start creating new pivot points on your center of mass. And so basically the thing you have to remember is every time you add a pivot point, they interact with each other. So obviously we're moving in three dimensions and it gets pretty overwhelming when you start adding uh, your rolling to it, but we'll get to that. So let's start adding some forward thrust and seeing where that gets us. One thing's for sure is I definitely think that if I put my thrusters up high, so this is a pretty high point on the weight, it's going to want to pull my nose down. As you can see, I should mention that I made the entire body out of metal and the wings out of wood, so that way all of my weight is truly focused a little bit lower on the creation. And the reason for that is if I say I do want to put some thrusters up on the wings here for forward thrust, uh, because I don't mind putting some thrusters on the outside, usually I tend to try and hide them of course, but in this case here, it might be a little bit more practical to put them on the outside, considering I did make this plane pretty small. And the reason why I did make it small is because sometimes it's just easier and a lot more fun to make a small plane. And it can be a bit more challenging. So if I max these out, we're going to see what kind of an effect they have on my upward lift. So we've connected the switch. And now if I press 2 like this, okay, so we got some forward thrust there. Now if I press 1, let's see if we can get over to that side there. So 2. So there you have it. So as you can see, my my nose was being pulled down very hard. Uh, this is going to keep rolling. I need to grab that. So the nose is going down on this forward thrust. So I find the easiest thing to do to fix that is to get back into the nose here. Uh, the one thing I like to do anyway is add a couple more thrusters to balance it on the inside. So this kind of creates an illusion of good forward thrust, if you want to call it that. Because uh, this 
is about allowing the freedom of making your creation look the way you want. So you make it look the way you want, and you make the thrusters work around that. And I find that to be very important. So this is the other technique I use for adding and removing thrusters here, is actually just removing the bottom panel and then manually adding them. So if I, say I add one right here actually, so we'll put that one there, just one, and we're going to connect it to the same switch that the forward thrust is connected to, that one right there. And it's very important, I'm going to put my weight back, because if I start taking weight away and then running tests on the creation, uh, you'll definitely see some issues if it's a very simple creation when you start putting all your weight back on. So let's see what this does. So I don't think I even changed the thruster settings on that, but I think it might be enough. So we're going to get a bit of air here, and we'll press 2 and see what that does. So that's a little bit better, but only a little bit. I think we can definitely increase the thrust on this one, maybe up by two, and we'll probably get something even better this time. There you go. So that's very balanced now, I'd say. Uh, we just made it from one side to the other here. Let's just turn it around. This is actually a convenient map because I can basically just test it from one platform to the other. So this works very well for like a tutorial video, actually. Uh, so, as you can see though, by simply adding this forward thruster here, and playing around with it, the, the nose going down was corrected by the thruster in the nose. So, it's a bit of a trick for making it a little more balanced, and that way you don't have to sacrifice uh, putting these in awkward spots on the inside. Because if you put your forward thrusters on the inside, it'll definitely give you like a nice pulling momentum. Uh, but the issue with that is you really take away your control, so if you want to be able to turn the craft and stuff like that. So it's always good to leave a bit of empty space there. Now, the next thing I usually do from this stage is I know that I can go forward, I know I can go up, but now I need to start turning. So usually at this point, I'll start doing the yaw control. And I've done this in many, many builds, and I'm going to show you what you need right now for this one. And this one is literally just a W, or sorry, an A and D converter uh, for turning your flying creations using thrusters. A very simple design. So I already have the thrusters there. I will grab a bearing, and I'll grab a small pipe piece with an elbow, and the long pipe piece, I'll pop it over here. And the last thing that we need are sensors. So it kind of fills your inventory up, but... You get this done quickly and you have it out of the way, so the best spot for me to probably do this is directly underneath the driver's seat because I probably can't fit any thrusters there anyway. So I will simply connect a few things like so. So it's just a small pipe piece with an elbow to a long one, and you can actually put your sensors on either side of where it'll be centered. So when I put this back on the steering wheel, you'll see it'll go exactly where I need it. And what we'll do is turn these sensors all the way down to one, and usually I'll just turn the sound off as well, and it's definitely staying in the button mode. So we'll get those turned off for sound, and we'll make sure that it's turning in the right way. So in this case, I want left turn to go forward. So when I turn left, there you go, perfect. So that's where I want it to go. As you can see, the A and D keys are activating the thrusters, and those are going to in turn, or sorry, activating the sensors, and those in turn will activate the thrusters. So, all you need to do now is add some thrusters. I like to hide them right here under the back wing. Uh, sometimes you can get away with just adding these back ones. So, the first thing I'll usually do is size them up in the back here, like so. And so when I turn left, I want my tail to swing out this way. So that'll be this thruster hooked up to my left turn. And so the opposite, of course, will be on this side, where I'll turn right and my tail will swing out this way. So now I have the thrusters on. I'm going to leave them at default settings, and we're just going to try and go over this way and see uh, just how well it turns uh, with the balancing. Alright, this is exciting actually. This is always a fun thing to do. So, as you can see on the default setting, it does not turn very fast at all. I don't even know if I can say it was turning at all really. So I'm going to reset this one, and we're just going to throw the thrusters up probably right to the max, because this is made of metal actually, so you always have to take into account the weight of your build and just how many thrusters you'll be needing. So let's try that again here. That's not bad. I can deal with that. Alright, so I've just reset the airplane here, and so it's very hard to tell how good your turning is on the yaw, so 
I've hooked them up to the sensors, and it looked like it was doing pretty good, honestly. I, I clearly lost control pretty fast, and I think that's in part due to the fact that we're not going fast enough. So I think a solution for that would to actually be adding a couple thrusters that are close to the center. So uh, sometimes you have to sacrifice a little bit of your design to make uh, an airplane go a specific way. And usually the bigger you make something, uh, the, the easier you can get away with designing something. So that's why usually people always say like, oh wow, your thing is so big. And it's like, well, yes, I understand it's big, but it allows me to add a little bit more detail to my builds while being able to make them as functional as they are. But I have added a couple more here. We'll add those to the forward thrust as well. And keeping them to the uh, center of mass will probably alleviate a lot of the, uh, the nose push. So let's test it with a little bit more forward thrust now. So there you can see my nose is dipping down, uh, but in reality it's actually my, uh, my tail is kind of lifting up right there when I start changing those things. Uh, but I'm not going to worry too much about that because I think with adding more thrusters for other functions we can actually start fixing some other problems and this is where making an airplane can be difficult so i hope i'm explaining in the tutorial at least in a sense that uh, is understandable and uh, that it actually makes sense uh, but i'm gonna quickly add a couple thrusters on the tips of the wings here actually uh, i didn't put this one in the right spot so those ones are directly on the tip and what we're going to do with those is connect them to a button or two. So, right here, I'm just going to lay these controls out nice and simple. There's a button there on the left and a button on the right, like so. And basically what these are going to do is give us our left and right roll. And usually you can actually fix some of the problems with the tail here. And the reason for that is because I can probably get away with adding a couple here as well. And hooking them up to, uh, whoops, I'm kind of getting sucked into my creation here. And I'll hook these up to them as well. So when I go to the left like that, it'll go that way. Oh, I think I had that connected, did I? Or did I connect it to the wrong one? That's kind of weird. There we go, all right, so. We're gonna try out some rolling around now. Um, one thing that's really bugging me is I accidentally uh, broke the engine there as you probably saw so I'm just gonna throw in another button here uh, just because I want this one uh, actually running the motors just because I find it's just that much better uh, when you're testing things and things look right uh, it's a lot more fun so I don't know why ah that's why I don't even know how that happened if you saw it happen that was strange. All right, there we go. So I've got the switch for the motor here. Uh, obviously, I forgot to turn the engine back up, so we'll turn that up to a three there. All right, so that's looking pretty good. All right, so let's test this out with the roll now. So I'm, I can roll left, I can roll right, and I can turn left and right as well. So... This isn't too bad. I'm actually making it a lot farther than I was expecting. Can I avoid that tree? No, I can't. All right, so I'm going to touch the ground here. All right, so that was insane, actually. I made it a lot farther than I was expecting to. Uh, but nonetheless, that was a pretty fun flight. It's kind of fun to test your, your aircraft out as you're balancing them. Uh, sometimes you might surprise yourself with just how balanced it is. And I think that was, that was pretty well balanced. I really... I noticed that the thrusters are a little too powerful, I think especially back here for the turning. If I turn, tone those down a bit, and I think if I turn these up by one, so let me explain. So I think what was happening was when my tail was swinging out, let me get this out of here. So my tail would swing out from the back, and when that was happening, uh, it was moving a lot of the upward thrust, and usually the problem with that is because you have thrusters up here that were pushing the nose down and then you have thrusters here that are pushing the nose back up and the same thing is happening on the other side and you're trying to roll and turn at the same time what happens is it throws these pivot points off right so like I was mentioning earlier in the tutorial uh, you have your pivot point and your thrusters are spinning on them and when you start introducing more thruster placements uh, that pivot point can change based off of the buttons that you're pressing 
and even physics of blades and stuff like that can change it as well, depending on how fast and heavy they're spinning. So, I've changed a couple things, and this is kind of the reason why, is because, because I was swinging my entire uh, center of gravity around so much, I decided to increase these, and what was happening was, when I would swing out, it would just kind of go up, and I was still dipping my nose down. So by increasing these ones, my roll will actually really bring that tail back down. And by decreasing those ones, it's going to really bring that sliding effect a little bit lower, so I won't be slipping around in the air, if that makes any sense. So let's try this again. I'm going to quickly turn around here. Let's just kind of lean into it a bit. All right, so I'm just going to give myself a little more space here. And let's see how this does now. So I can easily bring my tail back. And I made the tree. Okay, I just passed the tree. Let me turn those propellers on. Wait, the physics don't make sense. The propeller wasn't on. All right, I am... I'm, I'm doing good here. I'm, I'm feeling good. I, I feel like I might crash if I try and do something a little too crazy, maybe. Um, I'm trying my best to turn. Okay, so let's talk about what's too difficult right now. So the most difficult thing is keeping my tail down. Um, I just got it down like that, but it was such a, a kill to my physics, right? It just totally took my speed away, and I basically have to spin myself back out of it uh, because I was countering it with the roll. Uh, so let's see, let's do a little test when we take the, uh, the lift off. And that can change a lot as well. So I am no longer using the lift key. Uh, but as you can see, I'm still staying level. The roll keys are definitely doing the trick. Um, I might have pressed that button a little too late. Can I avoid this? Whew. Okay. I didn't think I was coming out of that. This plane is actually... It's pretty easy to fly, I'm not gonna lie. Um... As you can see, I can easily maneuver around by counterbalancing back and forth. So by using my roll like this, I'm actually wiggling my tail down. And if I wiggle left and right like that, you'll actually see it, it'll do the opposite effect. So by using both together, it creates a completely level turning field. Uh, and this is how I've made a few of my other planes. Sometimes I'll put my forward thrust on steering, which does like this crazy wiggling thing, and it, it gets like to a whole new level. Then you have to actually add a tail on it that's turning and spinning. Uh, but, I mean, let's try in first person, let's say. So here's first person. Um, I can probably turn this around pretty easily. Yeah, so this is flying... A lot better than I was expecting it to, really. I mean, first person, I'm doing this with one hand. Uh, the other hand, of course, is using the mouse so I can look around and really get an idea of my orientation in the plane. But, wow. I gotta say, I think this plane is 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 good to go. Um, I, I guess it shows how much practice maybe I've been doing with uh, thrusters. The overall build of this plane really didn't take too long. Um, but one thing's for sure, I want to add a couple more things before we're done with this build, and that is a bit more control. Uh, and so right now, as you can see, I, the only control I have for turning my tail up and down is by rolling around. So as you can see, I might get into some situations like this, and it's not a good situation. So let's touch down to the ground real quick, and we're going to add a couple more controls that will just make the plane usage that much easier. Alright, so I'm back on the ground here, and I'm ready to add a couple more functions. And the two that I want to add is obviously the tail up and the tail down. And that is really going to seal the deal on this entire airplane. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly add a few blocks like so. And I can see there a little hole in the landing here, and I'll probably be able to sneak a couple thrusters in like that. So on the wood there, I think there is room. Is there no room? Is that tire in the way? Oh, I see what it is. Ah, my mistake. All right, so there we go. The tire was not in the way. I was just not paying attention. So, with a couple more buttons now, I've got that one there in place. And I'm going to use two more buttons, so we'll put them here like this, maybe. Uh, so we can differentiate between the tail going up right here, which we'll put on the, st the steering wheel, and the tail going down on the next button. 
So six is gonna bring the tail up, seven is gonna bring the tail down, and that'll just give us that extra dimension of control in the airplane. So here, this thruster is obviously facing in that direction, so we're gonna be bringing the tail up with this one. So I'm gonna hook this one up to the number six key right there. And obviously now we need the down one. So I'll be able to probably just sneak this one in like that. And we'll hook this up to the number seven key, which is assigned for the downward on the tail. So those two are in place. I'm gonna run a quick test now to see just how powerful they are and how much more they might need to be. So let's lift up into the air and give it some testing here. So right now they aren't changing anything. Uh, so it's really good to test your stuff before you start flying around up and high through the air. Uh, so let's check that one and that one there. So now those are much stronger and let's see if that has fixed it at all. So I believe it's... that's... there we go. So the tail going down, you can see it really doesn't work, does it? I can use my... I can use the tail up. That one does great, doesn't it? It really pushes that pivot point. But the tail going down, it seems to me like it's not working properly. And the reason why is it's not pushing enough force on the pivot point. Where I have to put it is not a good spot. I would probably have to make it go farther off to the side, and it just wouldn't be a practical build. So, there's one thing that you can do to fix that. And first, I'm going to quickly turn those motors off and actually disconnect this one. Uh, because that one's a secondary key, so it's going to be number seven. So... The tail down was pushing too close to the pivot point, so let's let's artificially increase the strength of that pivot point. And all I'm going to do is add a bar here, and we'll quickly throw this back up on a lift, get a thruster out. And this thruster is going to be going in the front here on the piece of wood that I have just added. So there's the piece of wood there. Uh, so what that's going to do is it's going to push on the opposite end of the counterbalance, right? So. Here, this thruster is going to be added to the number 7 key, or sorry, in this case now it's number 6 because I moved it. So that's number 6 there. I think I just put it on number 2 by accident. Oh, that's because it's not the right one. Okay, make sure you pick the right thruster and then put it to the assigned key like so. And I'm going to leave it the way it is by default and see how much of a pivot point that creates on the center of mass. So we'll go up again. And the keys are different now, so it's 3 and 4 and 5 and 6. So 5 is still working the same. And 6 is working very well now. So as you can see, I now have some full control over the the forward and backward tilt. Uh, so let's just quickly, how about we'll turn these engines on and fly around one more time just to see uh, what we've got on the go here and how it's all working together. So I'm of course just going to give myself some lift and fly away with my forward thrust. I'm pretty happy with this plane, actually. It's It flies pretty well. And one thing to mention, actually, I'm definitely very gentle with my keys. Uh, you don't have to press them very hard. If you do, then you're really throwing everything out of balance. Uh, so I tend to be gentle with them, and as you can see, I move along just fine. So let's test some of the, uh, the functions here. So the roll is definitely bringing that tail down. It seems like it's bringing it down more than it needs to. Uh, so that's something I could work out, right? So I've decided, oh, you know what? I can probably bring those tail thrusters down a notch and that will probably fix that problem. Uh, obviously, in this case, it's not a huge problem because I'm still capable of, of recovering that issue and continuing on in flight. Uh, so let's use some of the tail up and down now. So the tail, it seems like seems pretty good actually. Uh, if I use uh, the other hand as well, uh, you can see I can probably get some crazier things going on. Uh, like that was a nice sharp turn there. So by using all of the keys together, you can see uh, you really push all these pivot points. Uh, but I can do nice quick turns if I press all of them together. Uh, I can probably get a little bit more acrobatic with it as well. See that's a, a really nice uh, 90 degree turn. Uh, the tail bringing it back is a little difficult. I, I'm pressing all sorts of buttons now. But see how it even wants to balance itself back out. Uh, everything is balanced in a way, uh, when it wants to return to a neutral position, it's pretty much back to this kind of position. Obviously, you can lose, lose control pretty easily, uh, but in the end, 
Uh, this is actually a neat plane. You can see I can whip around in weird ways and do all sorts of cool stuff. So that's my first tutorial, guys. Um, I hope it was informative and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more tutorials and you have ideas for tutorials in Scrap Mechanic, then let me know in the comments. I'll check them out and it could be something that I continue doing if it made sense. Uh, you guys could hopefully follow along with my reasoning and the explanations that I was giving with the build. Uh, but if you enjoyed it, like I said, be sure to hit the like button. That'll let me know you want to see some more. Uh, and leave a comment, like I said. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then be sure to subscribe for Endless Scrap Mechanic. And I'll see you guys in the next one.